Hi, my name is Dave Cardwell. I wanted to uh, share with everybody how to actually use uh, your geometry as a brush inside of Mudbox. So if you've actually created, let's say you've created some uh, geometry inside of Max or Maya, um, it could be uh, organic details, bricks, you know, chairs, whatever, um, bolts, mechanical bits, and you want to actually use those as brushes really quickly inside of Mudbox. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to, to begin doing that. First thing you need to do is actually to um, import some geometry and extract a displacement map. So we're going to start with creating a plane here. We'll create a plane for you and uh, then we'll import some geometry. In this case I'll start off with some bricks that I have. And what I did, and you can see here there's multiple objects and when I select it, and you see it's just it's just one node that's actually imported. What I did was to use the combine function inside of Maya before I export the OBJ. So this could be, you know, in this case it's four objects, but it could be a thousand years or whatever. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to uh, now what we need to do is actually capture this geometry down into an HDRI, you know, 32-bit floating point. Uh, map or image okay and that image is going to hold all of the fidelity of that geometry and then we're going to use that image to uh, actually stamp or brush into the mesh so we're just going to go into the extract texture maps option and I want to actually in this case generate a, a displacement map so I, I'll choose that and I've already got the plane selected, you can see there, so I'll just say use the, for the target model, which is the sort of, um, the model that the displacement texture will be baked into. And then we'll press add all here for the source models. And all I want is the bricks in this case, so I'll remove the plane. And then what we want to do is actually choose the, how the uh, displacement, displacement is being sampled, okay? Um, so if you actually hold your uh, float your cursor over the uh, this this actually drop down here, it'll give you some instructions. What we want to actually choose in this case is uh, furthest outside, and there are more instructions about these in the uh, documentation. We also want to type in a search distance, and this is sort of the ray trace bounds for the extraction. So in this case, I want to just, you know just type in a value. Let's see here like 80 so that uh, because I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the bricks are within that sort of distance that world space distance from the plane for image size I'll leave it at 1024 and remember I said we want to use a floating point displacement map by default it says 8-bit here in order to change that you click go ahead and click on the file icon and we can give it a name And in this drop down here is where you actually choose the, in this case, I can use, I could use EXR or TIFF, but I'll, in this case, I'll use a TIFF four channel floating point uh, displacement map format. We'll select that, we'll press save. And then we'll just press the uh, extract button here. And you'll see in the lower hand left, It'll actually show you. It goes pretty fast because this has now been threaded inside of Mudbox 2009. Just close that up. And now over in our image browser, we should see, here it is here, a, our displacement map. Now default, that image will look like this. And just to let you know, I, we get a lot of uh, feedback from customers. Sometimes there are users that... Um, think their map is broken because it looks black and white and there's hey where's the values it's, it's white you know this is not exactly what I want well you have to realize with the floating point displacement map this HDRI image um, if you use the exposure controls exposure controls there which are like the minus keys and you'll see you'll see here as you get, as I step down in exposure you can see all the values have been captured in that image okay but it's just because values are greater than one and you know this is you know we can only see one equals white which is you know so basically you get this sort of clamped sort of view of what's actually going on in your displacement just but just know that uh, your mesh now has been captured and it resides the details reside into this image now 
So we're, we're done with that, and that, that's how you would actually create the texture. And we'll just create a new scene here. And then let's, uh, I'll, just use, uh, I'll just use this tree stump here as an example object. You can see the resolution of the object. You want to actually subdivide that enough times so you've got a dense enough so that the, uh, the stamp we use will, will impact the mesh properly. Subdivide that up to uh, 1.8 million polygons. <clears throat> and then what we need to do is go ahead and load that stencil image. So I'll just click on the option arrow. I'll say add stencil. We'll choose the uh, brick texture here. And then what I want to do is, uh, because I just want to stamp, I want to press the brush down one time and to get the full fidelity of the map, you want to set your brush up a particular way um, in order to do that. I've actually created my a, a custom brush preset here for myself, uh, which is based on the sculpt brush, the standard sculpt brush. Uh, and you create these brushes by just saying add new tool here. And let me walk you through what I've actually set up in that brush. I've got the strength down at 0.5, 0 0.5. I've got stamp spacing. If you like float your cursor there, you can see what stamp spacing does. I've got that at 100 because I want a wider uh, stamp spacing. I, I don't want it to stamp twice in one location. I've got build up rate at 100 so that it instantly builds up to where the maximum result. And I got min size at 100% and min strength at 100%. So um, there's not, you know, it's going to ignore the pen pressure in my when I'm pressing on it with my tablet. Okay. Uh, another thing here, I've got the fall off. If you look at the fall off, the default fall off is like this bell shaped curve here. Um, in my case, I want everything under the brush ring to be impacted. So I'm going to use this flat fall off curve. And that's what that is there. And so that's how I've got my brush set up. And once we've got that, what I'm going to do for myself here is create a sculpt layer so that all of my edits are stored on this layer and I'm not actually uh, destroying the original surface and we'll turn on the stencil by clicking on it in the stencil tray and I can use the S key to just move around this is, so I'm just moving around this image and at this time I can just go ahead and, and uh, click once and you can see there it's actually stamped in the uh, all the fidelity that was, was in those bricks in geometry has actually impacted the uh, surface there. So in this way I can kind of quickly go around and add very very complex surface details based on geometry I've created elsewhere. And because I've got that stored on a layer or one of the things you can do with a layer you can you can work go ahead and work back into those surface details. So if I want to you know, add additional cracks or whatever, what have you, you know, continue brushing into this, I can do that um, without issue. And then the workflow will be to extract your final normal or displacement map from this tree stump uh, and, and get that into a texture map that you would use um, wherever you like. Now keep in mind, you can also do things that are not just sort of organic bricks. I, I've actually added I've got a, some other things that are not sort of organic. You can see here, I've got some little sort of mechanical bits, and that's made out of several objects, actually. If I just make my brush, go back to my brush preset, and just orient that how I want, make sure that the brush ring is larger than the image. Click once, and there you go, and you can see We've got all the fidelity that was in the geometry that I had created before. Go over to uh, go over to the lighting. Turn on some shadows. Crank the resolution a bit. So that's really all there is to it. Too, and you can use uh, using geometry as a brush to um, create surface details really quickly. You can see here I've actually created some. Know, very you know non-organic sort of forms um, and that's going to speed up your workflow and sort of uh, um, increase or improve what you can actually do with your brushes okay thanks